guys, Craig here from Fix It Fellows, and today I am in a Fiat 500. New acquisition, all seems all right, apart from the fact I've got a bit of a squeaky clutch pedal. So today I'm going to investigate what it is about it, what might be going on. It can only be several things. You've got the clutch pedal itself. The clutch pedal pushes onto the master cylinder, which pushes oil through a system, through a pipe, to the slave cylinder. Um, the slave cylinder extends and retracts, and that pushes an arm that actuates the clutch, the, man, the sort of mechanical element of the clutch. Uh, pushes an arm, rotates a bar, which pulls a, uh, a cage thing, uh, makes the cage for things rotate like this, and that pulls a thrust bearing back and forth, and that puts pressure on or off the clutch plates. So what I'm kind of hoping is either the master or the slave cylinder that's uh, making this strange sound. Now I'm going to try and show you the sound. So here we are down in the footwell on the clutch pedal and if I press it down, you get, can you hear that? And you can feel it, it's a bit sticky. Now I'll show you the sound, show you the sound in the engine bay. So here we are under the hood and if you look down here here we have the oil reservoir for the clutch hydraulic system here we have the back of the master cylinder that goes through the bulkhead down to the um, so you have a soft rubber hose here that keeps the oil topped up in the whole system and then this stiffer uh, pipe goes off across the bulkhead round here and down and it goes to the uh, master cylinder slave cylinder there which can be accessed by removing the battery and the battery tray but just for now, um, let me try and show you the uh, noise that happens if I pump the clutch pedal now <laughs> Now, if we move the, uh, the camera over towards the slave cylinder, we'll have a look there. So now you can see I've got the camera directly pointed at the slave cylinder. Um, I'm just going to pump the pedal so you can see what the noise is from here. Okay, so the plan is now to remove the battery, so removing the terminals here, uh, disconnect, the battery in, take the battery out, take the battery tray out, and that gives me access to that uh, slave cylinder down there. And then I'm going to disconnect the slave cylinder from the clutch uh, release arm and try and operate the clutch um, like that and see whether the noise is still being generated or to see whether the noise is actually coming from the mechanical side of the clutch. Okay, so first things first, we need to disconnect the battery terminals to get the battery out. So first things first, is disconnect the negative. So this cable here is a quick release, pressing the red button and pull that up and over like that. And then taking a 10 mil spanner, let's undo the terminal, pull that off over to the side like so and then we do the positive terminal and like that comes and then we just take this strap off so we'll take our ratchet put it down there under this bolt put the nuts on there safe off the strap and the battery should just lift out like so okay it gives us access to the tray so we lift out the plastic liner like so and it's got a drain tube on the bottom in case any water it's on the tray and now 
the metal tray itself is held in place by one, two and three bolts. So it's just a case of undoing those. So having removed the cable in from the back of the battery tray there, the battery tray can just be lifted out like so. And now that gives us access to the slave cylinder and the sort of clutch arm release there. You can also see with the green linkage, that's the gear selector. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to undo those two bolts on the uh, slave cylinder um, so as to detach the cylinder from that clutch arm and then try and work out which of those two mechanisms is making the noise. Down there, further down you can see that coiled up cable, that's all the uh, oil line that goes to the slave cylinder. I believe that on the back side there where I've shown in the tools right now is a bleed nipple should you need it. So again 13 mil, um, we'll undo these two bolts. The first one, and that's the second one. And now you can see and that comes the slave cylinder okay so there you have the slave cylinder what I've done is I've taken the cap off the top of the uh, the oil reservoir for the clutch system and now if I actually push this plunge I'm holding hold of the, got hold of the slave cylinder there and if I now push the plunger in you can feel the you can feel the squeakiness if that's possible to, yeah? That same feeling I was getting through the clutch pedal, I'm getting here. And you might not pick it up on the mic on the camera there, but it is making the same squeaking noise. There we are. So I'm pretty confident that this slave cylinder is the, the fault in this whole system. Um, doing it the way I'm doing it with the reservoir cap off um, the only moving part is this slave cylinder the, the the pedal won't be moving because any oil I'm pushing through is raising up into the reservoir so it won't be affecting the master cylinder so we can pretty much discount the master cylinder I'm pretty confident that it is this that's the fault so I shall get a new one of these, depending on which brand you get. You can get them for anywhere between 20 and 35 pounds, usually when the discounts are applied. I shall source one of those, fit it, and see what happens. So here we are guys. I now have the replacement slave cut clutch cylinder. I went for a decent brand, LUK, Luck. I don't know what you meant to say. Um, but this is uh, one of the better brands out there. So let's have a look, see what we get. Open the box and we get the clutch slave cylinder as you saw in the engine bay. Uh, when it comes out of the box, it has this retaining strap on it here, you see, keeps the piston uh, in place. So you fit it uh, and then you remove this retaining strap. You also get this unit is actually all fully loaded with your dot for fluid and it comes with what fiat claims is a quick connection so this is the end on the slave then the cable or should i say pipe that goes to the master cylinder has a, uh, a mal attachment on there and the idea is you can just unplug and plug in and there's no need for bleeding well all that's great other than the fact that this metal uh, 
part here, connector part, is located low down in the engine bay. I think it's just to the side of the passenger side footwell. Now down there, it is not protected from the elements. And this thing and the um, um, connecting unit uh, corrode and it's more hassle than it's worth trying to get them apart. Chances are, you try and get it apart, you end up damaging the bit that's attached to the master cylinder and you end up having to replace the master cylinder too. So, to prevent that pain, what I'm actually going to do is remove the pipe from this new slave cylinder and also do the same to the unit that's currently on the car. And in that way, we use the pipe that's already on the car and we literally just connect this new slave cylinder to the existing pipe. And to do that, we have to remove this pin here. As you can see, that pin goes through to that side, and it's a case of prising that out and then pulling this pipe out of here. Now, yes, we will lose a bit of fluid, so you want to do it, you know, over a floor that you don't mind getting a bit grubby, or obviously have sheets and whatever in place. And again, you're going to lose some fluid whilst detaching the original cylinder from the car. So again, be prepared for a bit of fluid drop in um, and put something in place to uh, stop anything going down onto the floor. So let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so just before we remove this line, I should just point out that here, let me get a bit closer for you, here there's a rubber cover which can be pulled off like so, and you have a nipple. And then here there is an Allen key uh, bolt which you can undo and this is the bleed point for the cylinder. So we will need to bleed this most likely. So you'll need a suitable rubber hose to connect to that uh, nipple there. And you'll put the end of your hose into a bottle. And when it's all connected up, you can undo the bleed nipple and ensuring that you have sufficient dot for fluid in the uh, clutch reservoir you can then bleed the brake now bleeding the brake is literally just pushing oil through the system to displace any air in here so you just keep doing it until no more air bubbles come out into your uh, pipe and overflow bottle and then do up bleed nipple when finished and you're all good to go okay so having got the cylinder over something to catch any oil that might come out i can literally just hook my finger now underneath that pin and pull it out. There's the pin. We'll just put that to one side. Now this should be a case of just pulling out the pipe. So here we go. And there it comes. It's, it's a little bit sprung loaded. It feels like it's got rubber seal in there. And there we are. So it didn't lose too much oil. Um, we will keep this unit in this position for the time being so as not to lose any more fluid out of there. So we'll just put that to the side. And then this pipe, which is currently full of oil, I can decant straight into my clean dot four bottle. And you can see that at the moment, that little drop there is the only oil we've spilt. Okay, so whilst we're not going to be using the pipe from the new cylinder, it probably would be a good idea to take the rubber seal, the new rubber seal off. So you just put a pin underneath and hook it over, like so. And we can swap that for the rubber seal that's on the existing pipe, which is probably starting to perish. So putting this new one on there will effectively make it like a new connection. Okay, so here we are with the old slave cylinder and it's just a case of taking out this old lock-in pin. So we've just got to prise it up. It's not quite so easy to come out as the newer one because it's got a bit of dirt and debris in there. But it comes up relatively easy if you slide it underneath there. So there we go. Out it comes. Let's just put that somewhere safe. And like the new one, it should just be a simple case of pulling out the connector. Let's try and get this into a position where we're not going to lose too much oil. It's coming out. There we are. There it comes. So put the 
old cylinder to one side like so and then let's swap over that rubber seal let's just get a pin hook it underneath there's the old rubber seal new one and now it's just a case of offering up a new cylinder like so there we go let's get myself in a position to do it and it's ready one two three and in it is and we just need to put the locking pin in place might as well use the new locking pin it's slide it in there and in job done just wipe away any excess oil which there wasn't much of okay we've got a tiny little bit of oil over there we can just give that a bit of a wipe but other than that that was a pretty clean changeover now we will need to do a bit of bleeding but first things first let's put it in position so we offer it in there so bolts in it's a lot easier to fit it when those retain retaining straps are uh, still in place there we go that's tightened up now it's just a case of clipping off this retaining strap and the one underneath um, with some wire clippers so just so here we go, we're going to do the lower one first. And now for the top one, you just make a clip there. Okay, one of the things I did forget to tell you was to put some grease in the cup there, so when that nylon bushing pushes in, it's got some grease in there to lubricate the whole joint. And then straight away you see that the, <clears throat> the rod moved out into position on the clutch arm there. So now it's a case of getting in the car, pumping the pedal to see what sort of uh, pressure we have. If the pressure's not good, if it feels too spongy, we'll have to bleed it from there, but we'll have a look. Okay, so I've connected up my pipe, um, bleed pipe, actually to a syringe. That will collect the oil. I'm gonna undo the reservoir there, undo the bleed nipple like so and then I'm going to give it a couple of pumps okay that was one pump and that was two pumps just going to give you one more pump and that should do it I'll tighten it back up Some tissue so as to catch any that escapes there. Give it a wipe. Put the rubber cover back over and go and give it a test feel on the pedal. Done. the clutch pedal feels good um, the creaking has been massively improved there is still a small bit of creak but it's nowhere near as noticeable you can't actually feel it in the pedal anymore the creaking that we have got is probably most likely now from the thrust race um, but as far as I'm concerned that's good we can put it all back together okay so now it's time to put the battery tray back in and the battery it all just goes back in the way it came out one bolt two bolts and the nut down there.
now clip the wires back in place. Like so. Good opportunity to give this a clean up around here. I also took the opportunity to clean the threads on there and in there using a tap and a die and put a bit of grease on. Now the tray can go back in, feed the pipe through. So they, now the battery can go back in. Like so, now the strap can go back over. Time to reconnect the terminals, give them a nice clean first. Positive turn on first. Finally, connect the negative terminal quick release bit. Again, give the post a bit of a wipe. Press the red button in and push it down over on top. There we are. Everything's back together. The engine should start now. Well, here we are back in the car, back by the clutch pedal, and let's see if that squeak has improved. Oh, it's much better. There's no sort of stickiness through the pedal anymore. There is a slight creak. I think that might just be the pedal assembly, which these are kind of renowned for, but nothing that would sort of affect you know, your enjoyment of driving the car. It's just me being picky now, but that's a definite improvement. So there you have it. If you have a creaky um, sound and you can feel it through the pedal, it's most likely your slave cylinder. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and click like, and I'll see you again in my next videos. Bye-bye.